The iPhone 6 was introduced in September of 2014. That's right, it's coming up on six years old this year, and it's been my wife's daily driver ever since she decided she didn't care about the 8 Plus and the 10R, and we sold those off, but the iPhone SE launched a month ago. And the fascinating thing about these two phones is from the front, most people would probably have a hard time telling they're different, but I think it's very important we compare the two, especially in today's day and age when a lot of people feel like if the design doesn't change, if the front of the phone looks the same, then there are no differences. Well, this is the perfect example of how much internal differences can make. Even if the front of the phone is not changing that much, that does not mean you do not get a big upgrade. So, should be interesting. Let's begin. So an easy first glance analysis would tell you, okay, they both have a front-facing camera, they both have a 4.7 inch retina display, exact same pixel density, but a lot of people probably don't know that the SE got a little bit brighter and supports slightly more colors than the original iPhone 6. And this was one of the most popular iPhones ever when it first launched. So many people were excited to see phone displays, particularly iPhone displays, suddenly getting bigger, and there was a whole lot of controversy surrounding it, of course with Bengate and Touch disease. This one has somehow not been impacted by that, but it was a big step for iPhone at the time it originally launched. The dimensions of the SE in the iPhone 6 are actually almost identical, but the SE is slightly taller, slightly wider, slightly thicker, and slightly heavier. So throughout all of the reiterations the iPhone 6 design went through, a few tweaks have resulted in it being not exactly the same. So if you thought Apple was still the company that was focused on making things thinner and thinner and lighter and lighter, six Six years later, uh they made something thicker and heavier. So not necessarily to much benefit of internal battery capacity because you have 1,810 milliamps on the iPhone 6 and 1,820 milliamps on the iPhone SE. So practically identical sized battery lives, but thanks to improvements in CPU and GPU efficiency and the A13 chip within the iPhone SE, you get a lot longer battery life compared to the iPhone 6. Not to mention, yeah, the battery health on this thing is pretty terrible, but you get up to two hours longer video playback with the iPhone SE compared to the original iPhone 6, but bizarrely, on Apple's compare page, the iPhone 6 is listed at 50 hours of audio playback, whereas the SE is listed at 40 hours of audio playback. So, I don't know if their standards have changed, or if the iPhone 6 was just really, really good at playing audio for long term or something like that, but yeah, technically, 6 has better audio battery life? I don't believe it. But the other similarity between these displays that the iPhone 6 design has survived through is no 3D touch on either of them. So between all of the reiterations of these two phones, 3D touch was introduced, implemented, and at the same time canceled and decided not essential, bringing the end result to no 3D touch on either device. Even though it totally existed between them, the first and last design of this form factor doesn't get the pressure sensitive display technology. So that goes to show you how little people probably cared about it. However, I'm very grateful for 3D touch because that was also the year Apple redesigned haptic feedback for the iPhone. Getting notifications and vibrations on the iPhone 6 feels barbaric. It feels so caveman to feel and hear the phone vibrating. which kind of defeats the whole point of having a vibration instead of a ringer sound, because the taptic feedback on the iPhone SE feels amazing. Whether you're scrolling through an alarm or getting notifications, it taps you and you feel it, but it does not make a noise. Whereas the iPhone 6, when this thing vibrates, oh my god, is it loud? Even if you're holding it in your hand, if it's sitting on a table, geez, it's probably louder than if the speakers themselves just started playing sound. Not sure how we lived with vibrate back then, but we did, and I'm glad that Apple has come a long way from that point. That's not something you can really tell from the outside of these devices, but it's just something you feel. It's a noticeable, very appreciated difference. The back design is much more noticeable, obviously, because Apple went from having lots of antenna bands on the back, the Apple logo in the top quarter of the display, the iPhone text being a lot different. They still wrote, designed by Apple in California, on the back of this one. And as you can tell, aluminum doesn't actually age that great. I know a lot of people don't like glass on the back of iPhones because either it feels too slippery or fingerprints or scratches or it's more prone to shattering but over time I mean 
aluminum on the iPhone 6 would scratch and scuff up like this one did, especially if you didn't take care of it very much and you didn't wear a case. And at the same time, aluminum is much more prone to denting. So you see little dents and divots within the aluminum design as well. And that's something that you just don't really get that much of with glass. There's pros and cons to both, but the main one I think Apple went with is the clean, minimalistic design of the SE that allows for wireless charging and a much more clean looking back, in my opinion. There's so much going on on this one between the antennas, the text, the logo being at the top, and I feel like they really simplified it while still providing everything the iPhone SE needs. Of course, supporting better wireless connectivity between higher Wi-Fi bandwidth, better LTE support, as well as Bluetooth 5.0. This was still Bluetooth 4, and support for Express cards within the wallet app on the iPhone SE, whereas iPhone 6 still supported Apple Pay. In fact, you can still sign up and use the Apple card with the original iPhone 6, but won't have support for those Express cards that a lot of people use these days. So yeah, the method of using Apple Pay hasn't changed that much because you still have Touch ID on both of these, but Touch ID is miles faster with the iPhone SE compared to the iPhone 6 because this was still in the days where Touch ID was kind of new and they hadn't really figured out how to make it unlock the device incredibly fast yet. So it involved a lot of resting your finger in waiting back in these days compared to now where you can basically press the home button and it unlocks and you barely even see the transition of going from lock to unlock. The other thing you'll notice immediately is the difference in the home button because the home button on the iPhone SE does not move thanks to that Taptic Engine redesign we got back with the iPhone 7. The solid state home button is a little bit jarring at first, a little bit uncomfortable for some, but once they start using it after a few hours they don't even think about it and it just shows how good Apple is at faking clicks to our minds because they did it with the force trackpad on the MacBooks. We genuinely think there's a click going on but there isn't. That allows for improved water resistance because this can survive up to a meter deep with water for 30 minutes. iPhone 6 had no water resistance whatsoever so do not get this thing near a pool and I'm sure the headphone jack which they did keep around so for some of you that might make this the better phone from the get-go but definitely did not help with waterproofing the device and also the solid state home button is much less likely to break on you whereas the indentation of the home button with the iPhone 6 there have been a few times where this home button would click and then not come back so it can get stuck it's a moving part which makes it more prone to breaking and I'm honestly kind of surprised that they kind of revisited the home button for the iPhone 7 but only kind of used it for that year until the following year when the iPhone 10 came out and there was no home button but I guess they got to enjoy the solid state home button with the 8 the 8 plus and now of course the iPhone SE which is probably one of the last iPhones to rock the home button if not the last iPhone to rock it so a huge difference when first holding them up is the iPhone SE actually has raised to wake which they didn't add on the iPhone 6 until the following year when the 6s came out so if you wanted the display to just turn on for you you could not tilt it up and have it turn on automatically. And also that little cutout at the top is literally just an earpiece. Whereas with the iPhone SE, we have stereo speakers, sound that gets pretty loud and comes out of both ends of the device. Whereas with the iPhone 6, uh, just on one end, that's it. And doesn't sound that great either. Probably the most substantial differences we have between the 6 and the SE though are camera performance. We still got lightning, we got near identical displays, we got similar form factors and edge design and everything, but these cameras, holy cow, are they night and day difference because iPhone 6 was actually the first iPhone to support 1080 at 60 FPS recording. So that was a big step forward, but now with the iPhone SE, you can literally achieve four times that with 4K at 60 recording, and it doesn't hurt that this starts at 64 gigs and goes up to 256, whereas back in iPhone 6 days, the default option was 16 gigs and maxed out. If you gave Apple all the money you had in your bank account, you could get 64 gigs with the iPhone 6. So maybe if you're not recording anything in 4K, 64 gigs is not that bad, but yeah, you can literally hold 16 times as much storage within this form factor than you can the base model of this form factor. So quite an upgrade in storage as well, but the iPhone 6 was kind of the first time Apple started letting larger sized iPhones have some camera exclusive features, which we come to expect these days as bigger phones usually have better cameras than smaller phones. But if you got the iPhone 6 Plus, you got optical image stabilization. But if you settled with the iPhone 6, you had to put up with just virtual image stabilization. So videos were a lot more prone to being shaky on the iPhone 6 compared to the iPhone 6 Plus. But of course, now we have optical image stabilization built in with the iPhone SE with a 12 megapixel camera on this one and eight megapixels on this one. But this is a classic example of megapixels not making that big of a difference because if you take pictures with the SE, compare them to that of the iPhone 6, it doesn't seem like just
just a four megapixel difference, especially thanks to the A13 chip. We have portrait mode, not just on the back, but also on the front, which is kind of amazing if you consider that when the iPhone 6 came out, portrait mode was not even a thing. In fact, it was two years away. So the idea of blurring backgrounds and having smartphones that looked like DSLR photos, that wasn't even a thought back when the iPhone 6 came out. And now with the same form factor and the same amount of cameras, just through CPU upgrades, we now have portrait mode on the front and back. The front facing camera is also a huge jump if you do care about megapixels because front facing on the iPhone 6 was an abysmal 1.2 megapixels. Barely a thought of a camera sensor at that point, but it did technically work. And now of course we've made the upgrade to 7 megapixels on the iPhone SE, which compared to today's flagships may not sound like a lot, but you can take some pretty awesome pictures with that 7 megapixel camera. Despite that giant jump in megapixels though, there actually wasn't that much of a jump in video support on the front because it goes from 720 at 30 FPS with the iPhone 6 days to 1080 at 30 FPS with the iPhone SE. So giant jump in megapixels resulted in slightly better video performance, but obviously it's better pixels. The 1080p looks miles better than the 720 does on the iPhone 6, as does the microphone recordings that you're able to get out of the SE compared to the 6. So cameras have definitely made a massive jump over the years. Battery life has improved. CPU and GPU performance is no joke. I mean, the iPhone 6 is not even getting software updates anymore, whereas this design is probably going to be getting software updates longer than any Android on the market today. And also, we got three times the RAM on the iPhone SE that we had back in iPhone 6 days. The A8 chip has not aged terribly well, just doing basic things on this phone like scrolling or swiping through your home screen can lag quite often. So the point of me comparing all of these differences between these two phones is that at first glance, when you just look at the front of them, they look darn near identical. But smartphones as they upgrade year over year are going to look more and more the same and it's going to be harder and harder to see noticeable design changes from the front of devices as we go throughout the next decade. So just keep in mind that just because the front of a device may look the same, there can still be massive changes done internally and externally without new form factors, without new screen sizes, without new pixel densities that can make the world of difference when upgrading your phone year over year. So let me know what you guys think is the most impressive thing about going from a six to an iPhone SE by hitting me up over on Twitter. Join me on Discord. We can chat more about it there. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.